How does that song go? Baby, you can drive my car, but only if it's electric? We are certainly seeing big time growth in the arena of electric cars today, and it's not slowing down anytime soon. But in order for the electrification of our vehicles to expand even further, we need to consider energy efficiency, cost reduction, and functional safety. But where could we go to check off each of those boxes? Our traction inverters, that's where. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Not only are traction inverters integral parts of an electric drivetrain and vital to the vehicle's motion, but they can also make a big difference when it comes to the energy efficiency and functional safety of electric vehicles. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Matthew Anil from Infineon and I investigate the variety of roles that traction inverters play in battery electric vehicles. How silicon carbide technology and traction inverters can reduce the size of electric car batteries. And how traction inverters can help with cost reduction, functional safety, and more. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Matthew. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, good afternoon. So, Matthew, we're talking about traction inverters and their role within electric vehicles today. But before we get started, can you set the stage for us a bit? We are looking specifically at battery electric vehicles here, right? That's correct. Yes. So this is a really exciting field. As you know, there is a lot of efforts in electrification ongoing. And today we will look very specifically a uh, battery electric vehicle. So it is one of the advanced forms of electrified powertrain for passenger vehicles. Yes. Excellent. So Matthew, where would we find traction inverters in an electric vehicle? There are three main components that are integral part of the electrified drivetrain that is core to the vehicle motion. One is battery management, which is more related to how the battery is charged, discharged, and how do you maintain the battery life. The second one is onboard charger, which is uh, converting AC from the electric grid to the DC for the car battery. And then the main inverter, which is the main focus for today's discussion, main inverter converts the battery DC to AC for the electric motor. So this is uh, what drives the propulsion. And it's also responsible for feeding the energy back to the battery because regenerative braking that helps to recharge the battery. Excellent. So what kind of functions are we looking at when it comes to traction inverters? We can start with the primary functions. So the primary function of traction inverter is motor control, right? So you want to propel the vehicle. So forward, backward, motor control, managing the hill hold, regeneratory braking, and also making a sure safe reaction of the car. But there are also some secondary functions like torque vectoring, uh, managing the discharge of the DC link, and also overall coordinating the vehicle stability systems like uh, the VCUs and kind of managing the synergies with the braking, steering, and suspension. So yeah, overall the primary function being the main propulsion, but then all these other secondary functions. Okay, so Matthew, how many traction inverters are we talking about here? Is each vehicle the same when it comes to these traction inverters? So there are different vehicle architectures that could require potentially up to four traction inverters. So here you can see there could be a version which has just the front axle where you have one inverter. Or similarly, you could have just a rear axle where you have another single inverter. But very common, we see there's all-wheel drive with some soft coupling, which needs two inverters. But then there are also possibilities where you could have an inverter and a motor for each wheel. And so we have many examples of that already in the market today. So many configurations possible and uh, up to four traction inverters in one electric vehicle. 
Okay, so can we take a closer look at one of these traction inverters? What kind of components make up these kind of inverters? So to implement the functionality of the traction inverter, there are, I would say, at a high level, two main areas. One is the control-related aspects, and the other is the power. So if you look at the control, there you have the control board that has the microcontroller. And if you look at the power stage, you have power electronics in the form of power modules, could be IGBT modules, silicon carbide. And then you have the driver board, which is responsible for managing the drive stage for the powers. So overall, you can classify it in terms of control and power. So, of course, you have the housing and the mechanics. You have a DC filter assembly in form of what you can see here. And then you have a DC link a capacitor, power module, gate driver assembly, and the control board. But, of course, there's also need for sensors in terms of current and position sensing. And then there are several connectors that this bring this all together. So this gives a little bit more deeper view on what are the key components or sub-assemblies within a traction inverter. That makes sense. Now, Matthew, can you walk me through how these inverters work within the vehicle itself? Yes. So I think we touched upon how the traction inverter is a key part of the propulsion system that works with these other systems like the battery or energy management and the onboard charger. So as you can see in this picture, the traction inverter is managing the high voltage interaction with the traction motor and the recuperation when it's applying the brakes. But then all these other systems are very important to manage the auxiliaries because you have this high voltage battery and you need to bring it down to 12 volt or 48 volt based on the architecture. And so what you see in the yellow highlighted area is the traction inverter that is directly interfacing with the motor. In some cases also there's the transmission that is important for making that connection happen seamlessly. So electric cars is a huge topic in electronic engineering today. And Matthew, we're going to be seeing a lot more on the road in the coming years, right? Yes, the market for electric vehicle is really taking off. We see exponential growth, especially in the battery electric vehicle space. And in some regions of the world, there's also plug-in hybrid. So we are looking at uh, projections of uh, up to 20 million electrified vehicles by 2025 and further growing that to 25 million in that range for 2027. So tremendous growth in the market and that presents a really strong opportunity for key components that go into this market. So what other benefits do you see traction inverters bringing to electric vehicles? Consumers are looking to reduce their carbon footprint. So greenhouse gas reduction is key. They're looking at how to optimize the energy efficiency. So they want to have very efficient systems that can give them the miles that are needed for good range. Then also the total cost of ownership. So in terms of efforts to reduce the total cost of ownership compared to an internal combustion engine, traction inverter has a key role to play. And all of this can be managed by having the right-sized motor, right-sized inverter that can manage the optimization of the range and achieve those reductions that are very needed for the environment. So traction inverter is a key component that drives the energy efficiency of a vehicle. Okay, so what about the material that the traction inverters are made of? Can that make a difference here as well? Absolutely, yes. So the technology that is used in the traction inverter for power electronics is a key component that determines the efficiency. So for example, there is an upcoming technology, silicon carbide, that helps to increase the battery utilization 
uh, improve the power density and lower the conduction losses, especially in light load conditions compared to silicon IGBTs. So Infineon has brought cool SIG technology, which has superior performance, that brings the same level of quality that we are known for in the market. And the selection of the power electronics technology has an important impact on helping to either reduce the battery size or extending the driving range because more efficient power electronics can result in a longer range vehicles and in addition also help in lowering the costs of passive components. Excellent. Now, Matthew, what other advantages do you see silicon carbide playing in terms of traction inverters? It's all about what is the consumer looking for. So consumers are definitely looking for improved range in vehicles and their silicon carbide technology really brings significant advantage in terms of range improvement. But then there are also key challenges that uh, comes with new technology. Uh, They are significantly more expensive than silicon IGBT technologies. They are produced in smaller wafer diameters. And optimization of this silicon carbide-based systems take more effort. So overall, what we see is there is coexistence of silicon IGBTs and silicon carbide in inverter applications. So we believe that silicon IGBTs will continue to remain as a major source of power components in the next years. But we have already seen silicon carbide. There's strong adoption uh, starting from premium BEVs that also extend into mainstream EVs happening right now. So we see that both technologies will coexist and brings its own characteristics and benefits. I see. Now, can you give me an example of this kind of silicon carbide traction inverter? Yeah. So if you look at an example use case, it could be that we have a rear axle that could be based on a silicon carbide power module. And Infineon has the hybrid pack drive cool SIG MOSFET power module that could be used in the rear axle. So that will definitely help with uh, improving the range. And, you know, this is very good for premium BEVs, which have already large battery sizes and overall improving the range. But then you could combine this with an IGBT based power module as an example, the hybrid pack drive for IGBT. Cost may be a bigger factor where we can use in the front axle an IGBT-based system. So, you know, trying to bring together the benefit of silicon carbide and IGBT in this type of an architecture, you know, while achieving longer range, compact size, and overall improved system cost. So overall, what kind of benefits and real-world solutions do traction inverters bring to electric vehicles? Traction inverters drive some key value for the consumers. So overall, the increase of efficiency, it helps in extending the driving range. So that's where next generation power technologies from Infineon, like the IGBT technologies, silicon carbide technologies play a key role. In terms of cost reduction, the target is to bring EV to a mass market adoption. Their higher functional integration at the component level and efforts to reduce the overall system cost, that's a key value driver. And then the other two aspects is also functional safety. Harmonization of the overall system safety concept. We have a lot of experience in bringing that to the market and implementing those safety measures in hardware And finally, volume production, you know, as the growth of the EVs are happening exponentially, one thing is to be ready also from capacity perspective. So Infineon has invested heavily in supporting the growth of the power semiconductor demand, but we are also looking at integration of components into and functions into single chips that helps to further reduce the need for components and overall reliability and dependability. So what does Infineon have to offer in this space? Infineon offers a full system solution addressing all segments of electric vehicles from pure battery electric vehicles to also hybrid EVs. 
So if you look, it starts from the power semiconductors. We can provide uh, bare dye, discrete or power modules, both silicon carbide and IGBT for high voltage battery, electric vehicle, plug-in and full hybrids. We have a very strong portfolio of gate driver ICs, so the high voltage ICE driver is well established in the market. We also have a very good portfolio of microcontrollers, the Oryx family. And then the current sensors and the position sensors are also very key that Infineon supplies there. And then the power supply and the communication ICs that are also needed in form of OptiReg, transceivers and FRAM. So a pretty wide portfolio that we have to address different forms of EVs. Excellent. Well, Matthew, I think we're almost out of time. Can you recap your main points for me? Absolutely. So I think the key is that traction inverter is an essential part of every electric vehicle because it is managing the DC to AC conversion from the battery to the electric motor and the regenerative braking as primary function. So it touches upon the key value that consumers are looking from electric vehicle. So overall, the market for electric vehicle is growing significantly, and that leads to large volume production of traction inverters. There are new technologies like silicon carbide technology that improves the efficiency and overall driving range. But we also see that that will coexist with technologies like IGBT and Finally, Infineon has a broad portfolio of products that makes the traction inverter the enabler of electric mobility. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Matthew. This was super cool. Thank you so much, and it was my pleasure. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash EE Journal.